Hi everyone, so welcome to one more fantastic 5 MCQ session uh, for need PG and FMG. So let me take up the first MCQ. The question is like this. After giving norelin IV infusion, there is decrease in heart rate. The reason for decrease in heart rate is. So it's a question from Parma and Physio. Option A, power receptor activation, stimulation of alpha 2. Option C activation of beta 1, inhibition of viral receptor. So take your time and try to answer. Okay, so before I come to the answer, let me talk briefly about noradrenaline. Noradrenaline is also called as norepinephrine. It acts on almost all the receptors like alpha 1, beta 1, right? But mainly it doesn't have an action on beta 2. So it can act on alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 3, but minimal action on beta 2. So where is alpha 1 located? Blood vessels, so it can cause vasoconstriction. And this will increase the diastolic blood pressure. Where is beta 1 located? It is located in the heart, so it increases the heart rate. And it can increase the cardiac output. So this will increase systolic blood pressure. So... This is what happens when we infuse norlin the systolic and diastolic BP increases and obviously when these two increase there is increase in mean arterial pressure. So the question asked repeatedly is whenever you give norlin what do you measure we check the BP particularly there should be rise in mean arterial pressure. Now what happens if we start infusing the blood pressure is high now this is detected by baroreceptors. You know baroreceptors, they are located in aortic arch and carotid sinus. They will give a message to medulla that blood pressure is high. And this medulla will stimulate parasympathetic. So baroreceptor gets activated and parasympathetic will get activated and parasympathetic will activate vagus. And the vagus will is parasympathetic so it releases acetylcholine. Acetylcholine acts on M2 receptor and that acts on the heart and decreases heart rate. So when we infuse Norlin, initially you can see increase in heart rate, but later you are seeing decrease in heart rate. This is called the baroreceptor reflex or what we call it as reflex bradycardia. So patient will have reflex bradycardia when you are infusing noradrenaline. So this was the question repeatedly asked in various exams. So please remember when we infuse norlin, norlin increases all types of BP followed by decrease in heart rate. Since it increases all types of BP, it is a drug of choice for shock with hypotension. Any shock with hypotension, it is the drug of choice. But one condition, one shock, it is not effective. Tell me which shock norlin is not effective. I am waiting for your answers. Comment. In the comment box so coming back to the question when we are giving normal infusion there is decrease in heart rate because of activation of baroreceptors <clears throat> the answer is option a moving on to the next question a patient on schizophrenia was on olanzapine therapy since few months it was effective in controlling the psychotic symptom but patient stopped taking the drug what may be the most likely reason so options are weight gain, hepatitis kinesia, agranulocytosis, muscular dystonia. So patient was okay but why he discontinued maybe because of adverse effect. So they are testing what is the adverse effect of olanzapine. Remember olanzapine belongs to atypical antipsychotic. What does it belong to? It belongs to atypical antipsychotics. And these are known to block YSD2 more than D2. And a major drawback of this atypical antipsychotic is they are known to produce metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome that is weight gain, dyslipidemia, insulin resistance, all those things. So probably the patient would have got weight gain. That's why he would have discontinued the treatment. And among atypical antipsychotics, maximum weight gain is done by olanzapine. Now when we compare olanzapine, we have to tell about 
clozapine also clozapine is atypical antipsychotic but it is associated with agranocytosis and also it can lead to problems in heart that is myocarditis in the brain it can lead to seizures yes for seizures and it can cause increase in salivation leading to wet pillow syndrome but the question is not about clozapine but the questions in the future will be about clozapine so please remember that now i want you to comment what are the drugs having anti-suicidal effect so please comment which drugs have anti-suicidal effects now the tardodyskinesia muscular dystonia these are called extra pyramidal symptoms what are the extra pyramidal symptoms the dystonia then parkinson like symptom then neurolept malignant syndrome tardio dyskinesia and one more we have to add that is akathisia so these are the extra pyramidal symptoms and it is mainly seen with typical more than atypical antipsychotics extra pyramidal symptoms are more seen with typical compared to atypical antipsychotics so that's why this is ruled out since since olanzapine is atypical antipsychotics there is less chance of this so moving back to the question the answer would be weight gain right Coming to the third question, drug of choice for cryptococcal meningitis. So, cryptococci, the fungus, meningitis, it's an emergency. What's the drug of choice? Try to answer this. Option A, fluconazole. Option B, liposomal ampetacin B with flucytosin, flucytosin, terbinafine. If your answer is B, then you are absolutely correct. The drug of choice for cryptococcal meningitis is liposomal ampetacin B. Lamb liposomal ampetacin B plus or minus flu cytosin. Okay, you can give, may not give, but the major drug is liposomal ampetacin B. Once the patient is stabilized, then we can put the patient on oral drug fluconazole. Otherwise, in emergency, it is liposomal ampetacin B. Now, what we have done in this, we have tried to discuss the drug of choice for these conditions now allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis we have to give steroids we have to give steroids because it's due to allergy to fungus with that we give itraconazole we give itraconazole invasive aspergillosis the drug of choice is oriconazole oriconazole now all this cryptococcosis, invasive candidiasis, coccidioidomycosis, the drug of choice is fluconazole. Then chromoblastomycosis, chromomycosis, sporotrichosis, histoplasmosis, for all this the drug of choice is itraconazole. And what is the drug of choice for pneumocystitis 0C? You should be answering me in the comment section. Mucormycosis, cryptococcal meningitis, the drug of choice is liposomal ampetacin B. Now, for mucormycosis, there are some azoles which are also used, but not drug of choice. The drug of which are used are posconazole and isavuconazole. So, these are effective for mucormycosis, but not drug of choices. So, mucormycosis, cryptococcal meningitis, it is liposomal ampetacin so please look into this try to remember the drug of choices correlate with your microbiology very very important now next question patient was admitted with administered succinylcholine it's a muscle relaxant halothane before surgery yes obviously a muscle relaxant and anesthetics are given the patient developed sudden rigidity core temperature was elevated to 104 there was elevation of anti-idle carbon dioxide which is the most suitable medication to treat the condition but first of all what are we dealing with now this is a condition of, called as malignant hyperthermia this condition is called as malignant hyperthermia MH malignant hyperthermia 
so in malignant hyperthermia in some people sensitive people if you are administering succinylcholine or halothane or fluorinated fluorinated anesthetics like desflurane isoflurane cefluorane they may develop muscle rigidity they may develop high temperature and that condition is called malignant hyperthermia so for that the drug of choice is going to be dantrolene sodium now dantrolene inhibits rhinodin receptor 1 in the muscle and relaxes the muscle dantrolene is also drug of choice for neuroleptic malignant syndrome so here the answer would be d dantrolene sodium is the drug of choice so please remember the mechanism in drug of choice for two condition neural malignant syndrome and malignant hyperthermia uh, moving on to the last question <clears throat> which symptom of op poisoning is not reversed by atropin diarrhea bradycardia muscle weakness increased secretions now answer you can tell answer is muscle weakness correct you cannot reverse by atropin how why let us see now op stands for organophosphate there is one more poisoning called carbamate now when we when we see these cases what is the mechanism they inhibit the enzyme cholinesterase so if they inhibit cholinesterase the acetylcholine is not broken down and if this is not broken down it acts on the two receptor m and n so on the m it will cause the symptoms like dumbbells d u m b b e l s so this activation will lead to dumbbells now n m it will activate the nm receptor so there will be initial fasciculation and nm receptors are going to have rapid desensation so there will be desensation of the receptor so there will be flaccid paralysis of the muscle particularly skeletal muscles and diaphragm and patient may go for respiratory failure and if you don't treat patient may die so that's why any patient of OB poisoning comes we do the basic OB any poisoning management take care of airway breathing circulation gastric lavage and due to respiratory failure what we do is we put the patient on ventilatory support mechanical ventilation so this will take care of the muscle paralysis but what about muscarinic action muscarinic action is doing this patient is having diarrhea urination meiosis and all those things this can be treated by a drug which blocks all the muscular receptor the name is called atropin and that's why the antidote for op poisoning is atropin so when we give atropin diarrhea urination meiosis bradycardia bronchoconstriction emesis lacrimation secretion all of them can be reversed but atropin cannot work on nm receptor that's why the muscle paralysis or muscle weakness cannot be reversed so that's why the answer is muscle weakness but what should i understand from this is what are the signs of atropinization how do you know that you have given adequate dose of atropin number one we check the heart rate the heart rate should have gone up second we need to check the pupil pupil should have dilated and the most specific sign is there should be decrease in secretion particularly lung secretion so these are the signs of atropinization now another strategy for this poisoning is we use oxymes like predoxime obidoxime we can use it they reactivate the enzyme but they should be used within six to eight hours the question is again question is again which poisoning op or carbamide oxymes are not used or contraindicated so please put that in comment section and tell me which poisoning oxymes are contraindicated op or carbamide poisoning so with that we are done with fantastic five mcqs hope you enjoyed this and learned so many concepts from this so keep interacting and please keep learning and revise your notes so any doubt you can post it in uh, our telegram or you can follow me in this uh, instagram so anything you want to ask the doubt this is the mail id you can put it dr baras from college at gmail.com thank you all any feedbacks you are open to give it at the comment section thank you all happy learning